Alright. <clears throat> Barking Dog Studios. Painting up some pagan roos. Militia. Some flesh tones. Using some... Army Painter War Paints. Tan flesh is the base. And then we'll be using... Barbarian flesh for the highlight. Is that coming in focus pretty good? It's not too bad. And here is my wet palette over to the side here. Already got a little bit of flesh. Already painted this guy up. I want to show you guys. I'm just using a very little bit of watery paint. Just a very little bit. Very watery. Take off some of the excess. It's going to be very thin. But that's alright. We want it very thin because we're going to layer it up. And the thinner we make it, the less likely we are to have brush strokes in places where it globs. Brush nice and full, and you want to knock off the excess. Give you a little bit more control. Am I getting him on camera good there? Alright. And don't worry too much if this kind of gets runny and looks kind of splotchy. Splotchy is not bad. And as we layer it up, that will actually take care of itself. The skin tone as we layer it up will start to even out. Gets his little ear in his cheek there where it's tucked back behind his shield. Trying to keep from getting his face poked from some enemy combatants. Oh! And there we go. First casualty of the night. Well, maybe this uh, double sided tape isn't the best answer. Maybe I need to go back to using the poster tag. I don't know. Still not going to give up on it quite yet, but it's giving me some pause. <clears throat> These models aren't actually got a whole lot of flesh exposed there. I don't know if you can see his little hand tucked in back behind his shield here. In a recessed area like that I probably won't add too many layers because we want to kind of leave it shadowed. But for right now I'm just applying the first layer of flesh all the fleshy bits
I don't know if the mic's picking it up or not, but my dog's outside barking. She just went outside, barked at something outside, and now she's barking because she wants to come back in. And this is Barking Dog Studios. I won't hurt her to stay outside for just a little bit longer. Well, there's one layer on that guy. Move my palette back out of the way here. I'm not painting directly over the top of it. I already got that guy. It's the first layer on. Uh, here we go. We got a sword guy. Oh my. Off camera. On camera. Let's move it a little bit more where I'm a little more comfortable right about there, I think, is good. I just want to say thank you to my patron supporters. Your contribution means a great deal. And I'd like to remind everybody, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the like button, share, and subscribe. And check out my Patreon page. you get access to videos like this a lot sooner. as well as some other perks my patreon page is still new so still still working on some of that the more patrons I have the more benefits I'll be able to offer We can get a good look at the guy there. And this guy's got very little bit of face with his uh, helmet and his coif. Really, isn't much face exposed. Well, that's good, right? That's what you want when you're going into battle. See if I can get his bottom lip there poking out under his mustache. One of the benefits of the Zenithal Prime when you're working in really light thin coats like this, it helps provide the shadow. makes the details easier to pick out which is good for when you're painting and when you are finished. <clears throat> Here we go. This guy's got a little bit more of his face showing than some of the others have had so far. A little easier to get to with the brush anyway.
backs of his ears. Where am I at? Am I still in focus? Okay. Monitor's off to my left side, so I've got to look way over there to see if I'm still in focus good or not. He's got even more of his shield hand showing. Right in here. This is fun picking this out. There we go. There's most of his fleshy bits. Throwing another little layer here across his nose. I'm still off to the side over here. Sorry about that. It's making things kind of awkward. But we're still new to capturing the videos. Getting comfortable, getting settled in. Just trying to hit that lip underneath his mustache. I won't really add probably a highlight to that. If I do, it'll probably with be just a touch from a light wash, a light red wash. Something like this red tone from Army Painter Quick Shade. These have become my favorite washes. I used to really like these ink washes from Vallejo. I still do, but I've become a big fan of the Army Painter. And I kind of prefer those. They're a little thicker. They're a little more of a wash than an ink, whereas the Vallejo is definitely an ink. It's much thinner. Uh, if you don't water it down good depending on what you're doing with it you'll get watermarks that's the Vallejo that'll leave the watermarks I haven't really had that much trouble with the army painter washes I don't have to worry about them quite as much but a lot of that's all in the technique too and as I've learned that stuff I've also gotten better develop better technique We'll get into that stuff in later videos. I'll probably touch down on it some just doing these guys. Well, do this guy. I really like this guy with the axe, with the pole axe with a great axe if we're playing D&D, &D, right? I like that hat he's got too. So, I always try to paint from the inside out. Sometimes you just get some really weird spots like his hands here in this position are kind of on the outside. But typically, a lot of your more inside parts are your more fleshy parts. So, they are typically first to get painted. Not always, but pretty typically. 
Let's see. I'll knock some of that off, but. First layer's done on all of them but this guy. This guy will be the last before we start round two or second layer. We're gonna start round two, which is the second layer. And then after we do our second layer, we'll move over to the lighter skin tone, the barbarian flesh that I showed you a minute ago and we will start so you can't get to his other hand there so it's just his head when we do our highlight we'll do it just a little bit thicker and we'll be quite as thin as this stuff If you can tell on camera or not, but that coat is so thin. I'm going to turn the autofocus on and we're going to experiment here a little bit. See if I can get you a better look at it. Okay. Auto focus. Come on. Boom. There we go. Okay, so you see how you can still see some of the primer through the thin coat. That's kind of what we're going for. You don't want it complete opaque. That will let the Zenithal Prime uh, do its job, where you've got the dark in the recesses, the mid-tones kind of at this level, where light's reflecting, and then you've got your whiter coming straight on top. When we do our second coat, it'll still allow for that, but it'll cover up some of the primer. You won't see as much of it won't be as obvious. And then we add our highlights. It will complement the skin tones and start bringing out some more of the depth even more. Took a chunk out of my hand today at work with a drill. It's a little sore still. And this guy already, already got. I think I hit him a couple of times. Well, third coat. Won't hurt any because it is pretty thin. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to spend as much time on your miniature, and I'll get into that later, I'll do some, like, uh, quick, quick paints. I'm 
where we won't be using paint quite as thin. He's got some kind of blob on his chin right there, but that's not from the paint or even from the primer. It's just the way his face was cast. This guy isn't sticking real well. Hmm. Give me just a second. I'm going to go ahead and redo his tape. The others seem to be doing pretty good. But I don't know if maybe it's because that cork's got a chunk missing out of it right there. Thanks for bearing with me. Now reaching in here, I'm just trying to pick out his little fingers. And what that will do by adding this thin layer on there, it's still darker in the recesses between his fingers. So, still give uh, good dimension. Same with here. I'm just now, more so than the first pass, I'm making sure I get the pigment applied to the finger. And it's not so runny that it runs off in between the fingers. I like this guy's hat too. It's almost more of a Santa Claus type style hat. I don't know what the name of the hat is, but looks pretty cool. Knock off some of this excess, try to pick out his fingers. Sculpt's not real great, but gonna do what we can with it. Here again, we're just picking out the fingers very carefully. It 
His hand that's inside the shield that got glued in there is hard to really pick out any dimensions. It's basically just a blob. Some of that's probably the dried glue. And that spear bent or is it just me? I think it's bent a little bit. Really with this second coat on some of these, you really just want to get kind of the high areas, start building up your pigment in those high areas. And don't worry about the recesses so much, because that shadow will pay off in the end. That shadow where you're still able to see some of the primer through the pigment. I forgot his lip earlier. Let's go get it now. His lip's sticking out there. He's in mid sentence or mid pagan roost curse words. Curse your Catholicism, he says. to worship the old gods. Woohoo! That guy, I think I'm halfway done. seam line <clears throat> going across his knuckles right there I didn't really file it down very good because it's really hard to get in there sometimes probably should have taken some more time and probably shouldn't be so critical because I am just going for tabletop quality not competition and when he's on the table and your head's you know up here and he's down there that's not going to be as detectable. Just gonna focus on the higher points of the miniature here. <coughs> Excuse me.
That's a deep undercut right there from a mold perspective. Or a casting perspective. some barbarian flesh and we may mix it with a little bit of skeleton bone for an additional highlight later these plates are really good they're very rich I guess creamy so they gotta get a good shake This one, again, I'm not worried about watering it down as much. Another trick that I'll probably show in another video when I actually use it is I would try to create a mid-tone by mixing these, probably equal parts, 50-50. This guy, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Now here I'm going to try to pick out some dimensions. There, On the sculpt, there really isn't any uh, tendons like you have in the back of your hand sometimes. You know, right in through here where your bones are at. Those tendons a lot of times will pop through the hand. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to paint them in there and give his hand some added dimension. I don't know how well that's showing up. screen <clears throat> oh I meant to show you this guy hold on because I showed him to you with the first coat let me try to do that autofocus again See there, you can still see a little bit of the primer through there, but not much. It's got a lot more coverage than before. And that's what we're going for. Well, that'll probably get edited out. Yeah, I think that'll work for the manual focus. And this guy's got a lot more of his face exposed.
Now on his, there is a little bit more dimension on the hand here. So I've got some guidelines. I think I had too much paint on my brush tip for a moment there, but that's all right. We still got more highlights to do. We'll be able to bring that back up. So I'm going to add one more highlight on top of this one. And maybe even a third highlight. I might jump in here and probably add, this will be the last highlight for the inner part of this hand here. And I'm not even doing the whole part of the finger, I'm just in little parts of it. I like that cheek. I don't think I'm going to bother highlighting the other cheek. It's covered up. A little harder to get to. Again, we're going to bring up his fingers. He doesn't really have the knuckles so we might paint them in or not the knuckles but the tendons again this is probably going to be the last highlight for the inside part of his hand here Keep jacking with this guy's spear, it just doesn't look straight to me. <laughs> now this hand here on this guy, his shield hand, might get one additional one for the knuckles later. Cause there's a little more light getting in there to that one. Again, he doesn't have the sculpt back here for his tendons no dimension so we're going to try to paint it in As you see I'm using the side of the brush there I'm just kind of sweeping real lightly keeps the paint out of the recesses but gets the highlights so off of his ears get his little thumb there Six. A brief moment there, I was thinking I was supposed to have eight of these guys. tendons
that's a bit much. <clears throat> I guess this guy fell off the last time, too. I might have to retape him. Probably should. And he actually does have some dimension back here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and tape him too real quick and pause the video. Again, I'm going to try to paint in those tendons. It's an awful lot of paint right there. Brogan, you hear her barking? Okay. One of the advantages to using the wet palette and using thin paints is you don't really get real uh, strong, like stain lines or watermarks uh, there tends to be a lot more of a kind of a natural blending that occurs I think for this little recess right here I am going to mix the two colors together a little bit There we go. Now we'll add some of this. Doesn't sound like it has a bearing in it, so let me These are windows that go to a different model. And that's just a paint that I'm about to run out of, so Got it sitting in there to. Woohoo! What's well, a little pain on your fingers when you're having fun, right? There we go. The reason why I picked this color to blend this in with the barbarian flesh and create a higher light of a skin tone is because it is kind of an off-white it is almost more of a beige or a khaki, a light khaki maybe. This is a skeleton bone, that's what it's called. You could use white, you could use a pure white, but that might be a little too drastic for what I'm after. So I 
put just a little dab on there. Get a little bit of that paint on my brush, brush over. So if you can see I've got the, both colors on the brush and then I'm just in a extra little splot. I'm gonna mix them up a little bit. And I'm just gonna hit his knuckles. Maybe the end of his nose. I might mix in a little bit more flesh with that. That way it doesn't look too white knuckled, but that's the gist of it. And we'll tame it down some. Focus is an auto focusing. There we go. <clears throat> I, I might just leave it on auto focus. See if it does any better tonight than it was in the past. I know it's pretty blurry. I think I do like the manual focus better. Right there we go. Now maybe I'll show you on this guy. touch up his nose a little bit too. Just a little bit of his ridge here. A little bit there. A little bit more over there. Maybe the tops of his ears a little bit. Call it good. Again, the nice thing about using such thin paints is you don't really have to worry about too much blending. It kind of takes care of itself. Yeah, this is the guy that gets a little bit extra 
in here. flesh in there you know, a little bit too much of the bone color but again the nice thing about using the thin paints is when I paint over it doesn't just cover it with the opaque flesh tone it still comes across as being much lighter His head later, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, I'm going to experiment with trying to paint stubble. I've never done that before, but I believe it could be achieved with a light uh, application of a gray wash. If it doesn't turn out right, I'll just paint over it with skin tones and be done. Not worry about it, but that will be in an upcoming video. I may just do a little video just experimenting with that and seeing how it turns out. that concludes getting some basic skin tones down on an army that we don't want to spend too much time with but maybe just a little bit more time than a three layer standard tabletop which is what some people do and by three layers I mean like just three basic colors like you might have one or two different colors for the uh, pants and the tunic and then maybe a skin tone and then you just kind of dip everything in a wash or lather it with a wash that's another way to speed paint which is a good thing to do for armies like this if you just want to get them get some paint slapped on them so you can throw them on the table and play with them but I'll go over that in a different video until then bark on puppies